Hi, so in this tutorial, I'm going to go through six questions. You can see the six questions here on the questions that align to the lecture. So lecture three on capacitance and DC circuits. So in question one, we're going to look at the capacitor and capacitance. So each question in this tutorial, I'll give you reference to a chapter and a section that you'll find in this book by Neil, Neil Story. You'll also find um, here where I effectively tell you what section to look at in the lecture three on the capacitor and DC circuits. Because the only time I'm going to inform you of this from this point onwards, I'd expect you to obviously look at this yourself if you want to look at any further information. So in this question, a 20 microfarad capacitor has nine volts across it. What is the quantity of charge that is stored within the capacitor. So if you use equation 3, 2 from the lecture, so lecture 3 on capacitor and DC circuits in section 3, 1 on capacitor and capacitance, it's given by this equation. So the quantity of charge is equal to the capacitor multiplied or capacitance multiplied by the voltage, which in this case is 20 times 10 to the power minus 6 multiplied by 9. Okay, because if you remember here, micro here, 10 to the power of minus 6, multiply by 9, which is just going to give me 180 micro coulombs. But if you look at that anyway, you can see effectively it's just 9 multiplied by 20, which is 180. Then obviously the unit here, well, the 10 to the power of minus um, 6 here, and then uh, capacitance multiplied by voltage is going to give us uh, coulombs. So moving on to question two. In this, we'll look at the effect of a capacitor's dimensions. So the conducting plates of a capacitor are given by the dimensions of 12 multiplied by 20 millimeters. Just be aware this isn't an SI unit, so we need to convert this to meters. So that to be multiplying by 10 to the power minus three. These have a separation distance of 0 0.8 micrometers. If the direct Trick has a relative permittivity of 150, what will the capacitance of the device be? So effectively, because that value there is not 1, we know that the capacitor is effectively, well, the insulator in the middle is, is um, well, the semiconductor in the middle is, is, not, um, is not air. So if we use equation 3, 4 from the lecture, what we've got here is we effectively got where A is the area, so it's given by these dimensions we just determined. The distance is given here, and then these two terms here. So epsilon subscript R is the relative permittivity of effectively the dielectric, which is 150. And then this epsilon subscript zero is just the relative, it's, sorry, is the permittivity of air, which is given by this number here. It's just a standard number used all the time. Relative permittivity is given by 150, and the area here is determined where effectively you've got 12 multiplied by 20, and then each one of those terms is 10 to the power of minus 3 and 10 to the power of minus 3, because we want that to be in metres. The distance, as I said, is 0 0.8 uh, micrometres, so 0 0.8 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So if you determine this, the answer is 398 nanofarad where nano is effectively 10 to the power of minus 9. In question 3, we're going to look at the electric field strength. So the conducting plates of a capacitor have a separation distance of 15 micrometers. If the potential across the capacitor is at 120 volts, what is the electric field strength in the dielectric? So if you recall from equation 3.5, the following is given. So here we have this capital E, which is in bold, that we use to note the electric field strength in the dielectric. Note that we, we put it in bold because we sometimes, well, we tend to use um, capital E for EMF. So this is equal to V, which is your potential difference over the distance between the plates, which in this case is 120 divided by 15 times 10 to the power of minus 6, because here is micro 10 to the power of minus 6 which is going to equal to 8 times 10 to the power of 6 volts per 
meter. In questions four and five, we're going to look at capacitors in series and parallel. So in this first question, what is the effective capacitance of the arrangement given below? Where you've got 12, 20, 10 and 10. So using equation 3, 6, the following is given. So when capacitors are in parallel, as they're given here, what we do is we just sum up the values. So it's C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4. But it's just 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10, which is going to give us 52 microfarad. OK, so that's in parallel. When we have, uh, you can see, three capacitors here in series, though the equation is slightly different. So in this question, what is the effective capacitance of the arrangement given below? So if we use equation 3, 7 from the following, you'll see 1 over capital C, which is effective capacitance, is equal to 1 over capital C1, 1 over, plus 1 over capital C2, plus 1 over capital C3. So you'll notice when we, did, when we looked at resistors, when resistors were in effectively in series, we added up the values. When capacitors are in series, we use this equation here that looks like the equation that we used for when resistors were in parallel in the configuration you see here. So kind of the relationship here flips. So using that equation, so 1 over 13 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 15. So as I did on the previous example, I'm just I'm just kind of uh, ignoring the 10 to 10 time uh, multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 for now. What I do is get a common base here of 195, and that means then this value here is 41. Because I want to determine what C is, so 1 over C is equal to this. But if I flip the equation around, that'll give me C. So 195 over 41. So in this case, the effective capacitance for this particular configuration, the three resistors in series, is 4.8 microfarad. And a quick check, this number here should be less than all the values here for each one of these values, in which case it is 4.8, it's obviously less than 13, 15 and 15. So you know that you're in the right kind of ballpoint, right area. So the final question is energy stored in a capacitor, so question six. So calculate the energy stored in a 100 microfarad capacitor, which is charged to 280 volts. So using equation 310, the following is given. So the energy stored is equal to, which is denoted U, is equal to half C, which is capacitance, multiplied by V squared, which is the voltage squared. So we know obviously the capacitor is 100 times 10 to the power of minus 6, because that's micro, that's effectively 10 to the power of minus 4 multiplied by 80 squared, and that's going to give me this number here. So I've got a 320 millijoules, so milli 10 to the power of minus 3. So that concludes the questions for this tutorial. If you have any obviously further questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.